Well, Joshua Leando, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're at the University of Florida pool in Gainesville. As I look over your shoulder there, I feel like you put a lot of hours in that pool. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Definitely more than, than anywhere else on campus. Uh, kind of always, always in here, always putting in uh, a lot of yardage, a lot of hours. I want to show our viewers you in a different pool, Commonwealth Games 2022, the 100 meter butterfly final. The crowd going wild over the last, I don't know, 25 meters. I knew I had a chance to win. Um, and I just, you know, just that, that last 25, obviously the, the crowd's going crazy. I just kind of zoned in and tried to put my head down and get my hand on the wall. But uh, being able to get that kind of first milestone for me, um, obviously first uh, gold medal at an international, on the international kind of uh, larger meet uh, stage was, uh, was definitely um, a good, really good experience for me. That moment was definitely something that I'll always remember. Yeah, you seem like a low-key guy, at least talking about it now, but you touch the wall, and then you realize that you've won this breakthrough gold medal. Uh, how, how did that feel at that moment? I mean, it, it, it felt great because the race was really close. Um, I don't know, just like a, a, a mix of emotions. kind of had to remember to calm myself down and go on down and get ready to swim another event right after. In 2023, you were named Canada's Male Swimmer of the Year. So it's been a, like a couple of breakout seasons for you. What's what's powering that? What's behind that? But I feel like definitely the transition of Florida just helped more. Um, I got a different perspective on the sport and obviously an awesome group to train with. Um, you know, Coach Anthony Nesty here, and um, it's just been awesome. I just kept improving, um, which is definitely something that I'm grateful for being here in the group that we have. So your coach is, is an Olympic gold medalist. Over your shoulder, we can see the Olympic rings, and, and underneath those rings are the list of, of uh, University of Florida swimmers who have won gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, does that feel, all of that feel like, like a burden to you or an inspiration? Definitely not a burden. It's for sure an inspiration. It's kind of cool to look up, and, you know, you have the record boards, every, you know, records all around, and kind of seeing the kind of greatness that this program is... Uh, has had is definitely motivation for me. I don't, I don't even say I really feel the pressure. It's just something that I look up at and kind of seeing what people have done in this program. And then it just gives me, gives me more fuel to try and get to the level that they've been at. 23-27, a new Canadian record for Joshua Liendo. You are going to become known more and more in Canada for what you primarily are, which is an elite athlete. But what's your life like away from the pool? Away from the pool? I don't know. Like, like you said, I'm pretty low key. I'm pretty chill. But I mean, I I enjoy watching sports. You know, playing playing video games, hanging out with my friends. Like just typical, just typical college kid right now. I enjoy music. I I played music in uh, in high school a lot. Still play a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I just try to. I don't not always focused in on on swimming. Obviously, obviously when I'm here, I'm, I try to be present. I try to be really focused. But Obviously, when it's time to kind of wind down and time to th not think about the sport, I make sure I'm kind of, you know, remove myself, give myself a break because it is really intense once I'm in here. You were born in Canada, went to, to Trinidad for a few years till you were nine or 10 years old. Um, what impact has Trinidad had on you? I mean, it's, it's where I learned to swim. So <laughs> it's, it's where I started my swimming journey. It's kind of where I started realizing uh, my potential and my goals. And yeah, it's just a, it's a it's a huge part of um, just me right now in terms of the sport. You know, the, the, the Caribbean nations are known for producing world class sprinters, Jamaica in particular, but really all, all the various islands, including Trinidad, not so much world class swimmers. And yet you have these islands surrounded by beautiful ocean. Why do you think we're not yeah. seeing more elite swimmers from the Caribbean? Um, I don't you're, you're getting more like now more recent, I think, as the the kind of coaching and the intention to the sport gets a little better. They're kind of seeing they have kids have more role models like, you know, Dylan Carter. And you have obviously George uh, Bavel when I was there uh, was a huge role model. But yeah, I, I think it's definitely on an upward trajectory. If you look around and see the kind of athletes that are coming from the Caribbean now. I mean, you're a Canadian, you're a Canadian kid, you're a Canadian athlete. But but uh, do they know about you in Trinidad? Like, have they taken a little bit of ownership of you? Yeah, yeah, a, a little bit. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's where I started a lot is where I spent a lot of my childhood. You know, I I went there like shortly after I was born and I came to Canada when I was in 2012 when I was 10. So, I mean, it's they, definitely a big part of my life. 
uh, you haven't been back there since 2018. What do you miss? The weather, honestly. <laughs> I mean, now I'm in Florida, so it's a little better. But when I'm in Toronto and it gets really cold, and it's like, yeah, I definitely miss the weather. Uh, yeah, the weather, the people, you know, the lifestyle. Uh, it's just awesome over there. Obviously, train out is beautiful. Josh Leendo from Canada, Commonwealth Games champion and bronze medalist from last year's World Championships. Second place, it's Leendo. Grusade, he's extending the lead. When you read any biography of you, it mentions first and foremost that you are an elite swimmer who is on this upward rise. But the other thing it always points out is that you know, you are the first black swimmer to have achieved this, to have achieved that. And in a lot of the races, you're the only black swimmer who, who's in the water. W why do you think there's so few people of color uh, in elite swimming? Well, obviously, you get the, the, the typical kind of stereotype, right? Um, and that's kind of, and then also, I think that kind of just puts it in your head that, oh, I don't want to swim. Like, swimming's not for, for us or that, that kind of mentality. And if it's something that you love, I think you should pursue it. And obviously for me, I've, my, my parents have made so, so many sacrifices. So that's kind of a big reason why, why I'm in that sport and why I think I've been so successful is because of just the amount of support that I've had. So, I mean, as you do better and better, there are going to be kids, like of all colors, but certainly black kids, who are going to see you, I assume, and go, hey, that, like that's an option for me. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely something cool to think about. Um, it's kind of strange because, you know, at one point you're a kid, you're looking up to... You know whoever it is like basketball players you're, you're, you're looking up to people as role models and it's kind of a kind of a cool thing but something i have to think about then me actually being a, a role model myself is uh is it feels kind of surreal yeah speaking of role models i think alan iverson is has words that you live by right yeah i mean i i love Al, alan iverson my parents and both my mom and my dad loved watching basketball when i was younger but i kind of i think i i watched a documentary about him first and some i just really connected uh, with him on how, because obviously he, he was different for a lot of people in the league and he changed the game. Uh, and just, I, I really identify with him on that and how he was, you know, stayed true to himself no matter what. Let's talk about the Canadian swim team. The, the women have been killing it, right? Like for a few Olympic cycles. And may I say, they've been more successful than, than the male swimmers. Do you and, and, and the other guys, do you guys talk about that? Something we always talk about, you know, the girls being good and, you know, how we have to step up. And it's something that we know. Um, hasn't always been easy, but it's definitely a work in progress and I'm working towards it. Like I said, Finley getting his first, uh, his first international um, gold medal at a, at a high level long course uh, championships. It's a gold medal going the way of Canada. Finlay knocks. Big upset. We've got another gold medal winning country here at the Doha World Championships. Coach is happy. Big win for Canada. So that's definitely got me pretty excited for what's to come at, at the Olympics. But I mean, I, I think we're looking good. I think we have good talent and we have definitely a pretty good momentum going to the games. As you prepare for Paris, prepare for the Olympics, I I'm just curious, what's it like for you between now and then? I'm not thinking about, you know, the Olympics, the dates and the times, but I, I, I don't, I don't get ahead of myself. I try to stay in the moment and control what I can right now. Um, cause there's a lot of steps leading up to going to Olympics ga Olympic games, you know, there's obviously some meets getting ready, the training, uh, you know, weight room, wh whatever it is. And obviously there's Olympic trials and then there's, you know, getting acclimatized for different time zones. And then there's the Olympics. So there's a lot of things that lead up to actually the day of your event. And I just try to take it one step at a time. What do you want to achieve in Paris? I mean, so last time I, I, I missed out on, on a final it individually, I, we did make the final in the relay, but. I definitely want to get myself in an individual final and then from there at the Olympics anything can happen in a final. Being an Olympian is an incredible thing. Uh, to, to be a medalist would be even better and we wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it.